Hello everybody and welcome to another edition of Physiology Made Simple with me Dr. Amir Sandhu. Now in the previous uh, part I actually discussed about the ventilatory threshold and the anaerobic threshold uh, and how physiologically it actually occurs. Now in today's video I'm actually going to explain some um, basic things that you can do in your training to improve your anaerobic threshold and therefore your endurance performance. So let's take a closer look. So the first training that we're going to, the first training approach we're going to use to improve our anaerobic threshold is the um, continuous uh, training method okay continuous training um, the, the idea is that we're basically trying to build up our aerobic fitness okay it's fundamental that we build up our uh, kind of physiological adaptations that take place so for example when you do aerobic training what you're going to be doing is you're going to be increasing uh, the amount of mitochondria that are present within the muscle fiber, okay, that's going to aid aerobic respiration. So it's going to mean that you're going to rely much longer on aerobic energy sources to produce ATP, okay? So you have increased mitochondria, you also have uh, increased angiogenesis, um, so you have um, you know more a growth of more blood vessels especially in the muscle vessel in the muscle uh, architecture so you know increased capillarization and that's essentially what that's going to uh, cause capillarization what that's going to cause is it's going to enable you to have more blood flow going to the muscle tissue so increased blood flow okay now that's important. You've also got other cardiovascular adaptations that occur from high volume uh, aerobic training, such as um, you know, left ventricular hypertrophy, left ventricular hypertrophy, which will increase uh, stroke volume, um, SV, and hopefully cardiac output as well. So I'll put Q with a dot here. Okay, so these are some of the adaptations uh, that might take place. So if I just get um, another pen, just to uh, mark out the fact that these are um, the adaptations that might occur from the training program that um, I'm about to suggest to you, which is all evidence-based, uh, it's all based on research. So essentially what you want to do is you want to have the element of progression in there. So in this training program, let's say for example you're um, uh, doing running or cycling, other aerobic exercises, you might start by doing just 100 minutes per week. 100 minutes per week. This is quite a low um, a duration okay now it's good to start off if you're uh, new to trying to new to kind of like uh, endurance training and you want to improve your anaerobic threshold this is a good place to start but you can vary the duration based on you know what your baseline uh, fitness is and the idea is that you want to have built in over the coming weeks a kind of um, if I find another color a 10 to 20 percent progression in the um, duration of your training okay so if we take the upper limit here 20 percent if i was to take um, uh, 20 percent for 100 minutes each week eventually over four weeks i would actually uh, be able to exercise at 200 minutes per week okay and this would just be my general aerobic fitness so you know this would be running this would be cycling uh, this might be rowing this might be swimming so lots of different sports that you can do here the idea is that by incorporating a 20 percent progression uh, into my um, training program over four weeks i'm going to progress to 200 minutes per week now that's really good in terms of um, developing your aerobic fitness and having some of these adaptations and other adaptations taking place in terms of the intensity that you need to set well the key thing is really is to use and I'll use a different color is to use the ratings of perceived exertion okay so the RPE um, now what you want to do is if I bring the RPE uh, on into the shot here okay you want to have a RPE which is somewhere between 11 to 12 okay so somewhere between 11 to 12 so that will enable you to uh, have 
uh, a, not a very difficult session, but it will enable you to have um, a, a, a session where you're using primarily aerobic pathways. Okay, so enhancing the aerobic pathways that we talked about here. So RP uh, around about uh, 11 till 12. Um, Okay, and we know that RP is correlated quite highly with um, lactate and also with heart rate as well. So we know that these perceptual responses from the RP scale correlate very, very well with um, uh, the heart rate and lactate. So this might be one training plan that you might do. And, you know, you need to make sure that you've got enough rest in between uh, the days, your training days as well, so that you're not uh, stressing your body too much. And that you, the whole idea is that you build this up gradually over four weeks. Okay, so that's the first thing that you do and this would be really just good for your aerobic fitness. One other thing that I'd like to add here is to do some, you might want to um, do, in fact what we'll do is we'll talk about that in the next section, I'm probably getting a little bit ahead of myself. So moving this aside here, the next training uh, program that we talked about was the um, maximal steady state. So if I go to two and I put maximal steady state training, okay. Now, what, what's involved in this training? It involves going that little bit harder, okay? We're now gonna start working close to our anaerobic threshold. So we've got some of these adaptations taking place initially from our uh, continuous exercise high volume training. We're now going to go for uh, working close to the lactate threshold. So now what we're actually going to do is, because I've already told you that RPE correlates quite strongly with the lactate threshold, I'm gonna bring my RPE scale back in uh, to the screen here and what we can now see is that we need to be working somewhere between somewhat hard and hard okay now research has shown that for most individuals their lactate threshold lies somewhere between these points off the RPE scale. Now in some individuals that are highly trained, of course the RPE is going to be, the lactic threshold is gonna occur at much higher RPEs, okay? Uh, but you don't wanna be down here because this is where you'd really be using uh, anaerobic glycolysis um, and uh, you'd probably be fatiguing and stopping very quickly. So you don't want to be training over here. You want to be training, uh, as I said before, somewhere between 13 and 15 on the RPE scale. So that's what you're trying to aim for. Okay, let's move this out of the way. Um, so 13 to 15, we grab another uh, pen. I'm losing my pens here. So uh, RPE, 13 to 15. Okay, so that is the intensity that you're going to be kind of setting and that correlates closely with the um, where the lactate threshold might be. So you're training close to the lactate threshold. Now, in terms of how much the duration of this session, this should be around about 10% of your total weekly training volume. So total volume over a given week, okay? So I'm gonna put weekly here. So 10% of a total, let's say for example, you were doing 200 minutes of uh, continuous aerobic exercise per week. And then you're gonna actually have a, a session where you're going to do this maximal steady state training. So 10% of that would only equate to about a 20 minute session. So in a 20 minute session, you are going to basically, be um, training close to the uh, RP of 13 to 15 um, and you, you'll be getting uh, you know some initiation of the uh, aerobic me uh, um, metabolism the aerobic pathways that we talked about but you'll also be working close to um, uh, you know the onset of some of the anaerobic pathways as well now in this uh, approach here you, there's a number of things that you can you can actually do so you can uh, up the tempo of your running so you can just run that bit harder you could cycle that bit harder swim harder etc uh, or you could actually uh, increase the challenge of that particular exercise so if we take running ex as an example this is where you might choose a hill which is steep enough to give you 
um, a, a, an intensity which equates to about 13 to 15. And, okay, and as you start to get um, uh, the adaptations taking place, as this starts to get easier, you can you know, obviously run on the hill for longer or you can choose a more steeper hill, etc. So there's various um, ways that you can manipulate the exercise that you're currently doing to make it uh, close to the lactate threshold. In general, one point I wanted to make a little bit earlier is it's very good to do things like hill running or even hill cycling because they're great ways to actually get a feel of how your body is when you're working at the anaerobic threshold. Okay, so by doing hill running and cycling, it's really nice because um, perceptually you can you can kind of feel uh, how your body is feeling in terms of the fatigue, uh, any pain, uh, but also you have adaptations that occur very very quickly very quickly and this is a great way to actually improve um, you know the, the number of mitochondria that are present in your muscle and therefore improve your aerobic capacity and aerobic threshold so this is the type of training that you need to do this is important here that we talk about the um, uh, RP set uh, 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 you know appropriate intensity it's only 10% of your total volume so you don't need to overtrain this is extremely important you don't want to get yourself having uh, injuries occurring and then the selection of exercises can be dependent upon you you will know best how to uh, increase the intensity of the given exercise whether it be through um, uh, increasing the tempo or uh, through some other manner in, in terms of increasing the difficulty then we have the third um, approach that you can use and this is the uh, approach of using interval training oops slightly messed that up so interval training is um uh, you know, it's, it's a very good good approach, and there's various methods that you can do here. And one of the more common methods that's um, uh, you know proposed by uh, a number of different uh, scientists, coaches, people that are actually working with uh, elite athletes is the two to one ratio, okay, of um, work to recovery. So let's put that here: work to recovery. And what this interval training method enables you to do is um, work above your anaerobic threshold for a certain amount of time and then give you a slightly shorter block of recovery before you do it again. And the idea is that with, with time, you start to accumulate the adaptations that take place in your body. So if we imagine that you do a particular uh, effort, you rest for a shorter time, then you do the next effort, you rest again for a short time, you do the next effort, and so on and so forth. You, you, know, you can build in four stages, five stages, depending on the duration. And what we're actually seeing is a gradual in improvement in the threshold at which we start to uh, accumulate um, you know, hydrogen ions, lactate, and then we have to stop. So you're actually improving your anaerobic threshold by doing this interval training. So in terms of uh, an example, of a training program, if we use a different coloured pen, you might want to do um, four stages which are four minutes long, okay? So you've got these four times four minute stages and essentially if we use the two to one ratio we're going to have a rest period of two minutes, okay? Two minutes of rest. Now Let's think about what we were doing before in terms of the RPE. In this stage here, let's bring this down here, the, the actual stage where you're going to be doing the, the exercise for four minutes, you want to be exercising at an RPE uh, which is greater than 15, okay? 15 on the Borg scale. So let's bring that Borg scale back in again. So 15 is actually quite hard, okay? So we can see here that, you know, if it, you're, you're going to be working uh, all, almost above, just above your lactate threshold. And what, what you're going to do afterwards is during two minutes recovery, you're going to drop down to below 12 RP, okay? Because you want to have uh, initial, you want to have appropriate recovery. Essentially, what you want to have in the rest period is so if I put down here two minutes, drop it down to just less than 12. Uh, RPE and essentially what you want to do in the rest period is have enough time for some of this um, lactate and hydrogen ions that have accumulated to clear so during the recovery you, you'll get a reduction in lactate 
a reduction in hydrogen ions and other waste products as well. And but it's not enough time for the lactate to clear, comp to clear completely, okay? So it's not enough time for all of that lactate to have been um, uh, completely removed. And so you do your next session whilst there's still lactate hydrogen ion buildup within the muscle, and eventually, with time, you start to get a much more uh, efficient uh, shuttling of the lactate, uh, and, you're th and of course, along with the other adaptations that I talked about, you start to get an increase in, in your anaerobic threshold. So in terms of programming considerations, it's very much uh, four minute, you could do four minute stages, uh, f you know, greater than 15 RP, so you're above the lactate threshold. Your rest stage will be less than 12 RP as well. And you know, you could vary this. There's so many different variations. You don't have to do four by four minute stages. You could do uh, slightly shorter stages. Um, so two minute stage with one minute rest, particularly to begin with, and you can even progress on to much longer stages as well where you do, uh, for example, 10 minutes of exercise followed by five minutes rest and so on and so forth. So there's a number of different approaches that you can take here. Some key rules, and if we use another colored pen for that, uh, some key rules are to make sure that you don't, um, so, so let's put here rules, um, don't schedule interval training back to back with a maximal steady state session. Interval training back to back with the maximal steady state training session, MS, MSST, okay? So you don't want to do that. Um, you want to allow enough training, uh, enough recovery between these different types of training sessions. And remember, you've always got your continuous sessions, which you still need to do. Um, and also you don't need to go uh, crazy with this type of training. Again, this is, there's different recommendations, different coaches will advise different things based upon their athletes and the nature of the, the competition. But again, don't exceed, um, don't exceed 10% of your total, of total training volume, okay? So you don't want to be, you know, you, you, your whole training doesn't have to just be interval training. This needs to be part of a program of different sessions that you're going to be doing uh, across a program over a given number of weeks, okay? So it's extremely important. So if we're thinking about 10% of a total uh, training volume, let's say for example you're doing 200 minutes per week, then again, you only need to have a 20 minute session. You may feel that at some points you need, you could, you know, if you increase, for example, these, these stages, the duration of these stages, you might have a longer than 20 minute session, that's fine, but you make compensations else, elsewhere. So if you do have a particular week where you're doing more of the uh, interval training, maximal steady state training, then you make a reduction in the continuous training, the important thing is that we don't have a, a, a situation where we're overtraining, where we increase our risk of injury, you know, overuse injuries, etc. Uh, we want to be able to train so that we have these adaptations. And take a step back every couple of weeks, each month, you can, you know, you can see whether this type of training is working by looking at your run time, stage times, etc. So you can use various performance indicators to see whether this training is improving your anaerobic threshold and whether that's translating into a performance uh, benefit. So those were the three methods that we've talked about in today's video. I'd like to thank you very much for your time. Uh, please do join me again for more videos very soon.